take these off. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Omar of All About Rush. There's something that has come up that has come to my attention that I think we should talk about. I was going to record another video about another great Rush topic, but this I think has become pretty urgent and I want to bring it to your attention, bring it to all of the Rush community's attention, actually to prevent something from happening. I watched a video from Phil from Wings of Pegasus, a great YouTube channel. He's a guitar player in England. He does a lot of reaction reviews from a very analytical and technical perspective and he uh, lately has he has been doing a lot of videos relating to auto-tune and pitch correction and he analyzes a lot of voices and puts them through the this uh, auto-tune program and analyzes if there's auto-tuning going on or not and if there isn't how great the voices are yada 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 anyway he was analyzing a recording from the eagles and uh randy meisner one of the singers, the bass player of the Eagles, and it was very alarming to me what I saw. I saw him analyzing a recording that uh, the producers, the record makers, or whoever whoever is in control of the music of the Eagles. You'd think that it would be the band members themselves. Actually, a lot of times the band members are not in control of their own music, but in any case, we have a particular song that uh, Randy Meisner sings, and... The song has been auto-tuned, like completely. His singing has been auto-tuned entirely, auto-tuned and pitch-corrected. And it's a live performance of his. And what Phil does, he plays the original live performance, and there's really no need at all to alter the original singing. It's, re it's great singing. But people who think they're in the know uh, have determined that this needs to be fixed for some reason or other, and they auto-tune it, and they pitch-correct it to no end. And I'd like to play you a clip from his video, just so you can see exactly uh, what we're talking about here. He explains it a lot better than I do. It's got to the point where people in the studio, producers and people that are now editing this for a re-release, think that they're making it better somehow than a vocalist has who was already great, you can't improve on it. But people who can't sing and have never sung at this kind of level think, oh, I'm gonna make this better by applying <laughs> what I think it needs. But it's all subjective, so you've just gotta leave it as it is and leave the art as it was. And I'm not gonna play his whole video. You can watch, I, I'm gonna to link to his video in the description. Great analysis and you know, subscribe to his channel. It's an excellent channel. Uh, where he talks about this and it actually it kind of irked me because we see people making direct decisions on our favorite singers and auto correcting auto tuning them when there's really no need to do it and you think well could this happen could this happen to rush could this happen to getty lee would people who think they know more uh with with this hubris take getty lee's singing and take some recording from live recording from the 70s or the 80s or whatever or whenever and auto-tune his voice. We've taken a lot of pride as Rush fans because of the authenticity of the band members, of their musicianship, of their doing things live and letting things happen the way they happen and even the band members themselves admitting that on every tour, we're talking what 19 tours or whatever whatever record they they recorded, they toured the record, all those tours, there were maybe three or four shows from each of those tours that they could say, man, we nailed it. I mean, that we did really good. So there weren't that many. So you figure there would be a lot of shows that there were mistakes here and there, even though Russian fans don't like to admit that they make mistakes, they're pretty perfect. <laughs> but in any case, they were really good live. And that's really, that was their shtick, that they were an excellent band live. And to think that someone from one of their record companies or some producer or someone who thinks they know better would take maybe, a, um, I don't know, any of those concerts. Maybe let's take back in the day, back in the 70s, when Giddy Lee was really flailing all over the place with his voice. But it wasn't that he was flailing in an uncontrolled way. He pretty much stayed on key. It's just that he took a lot of liberties when he sang live. Of course, in the studio, he was spot on because he had to be spot on because we're talking about the studio. The studio records, they pretty much do have to be somewhat perfect. You take the imperfections out. And I don't even mind a little bit of pitch correction. 
here and there. I mean, why saying a whole phrase when it's just one little note that's kind of off? Maybe you can pitch correct that, no big deal. But to auto-tune the whole thing and make it sound almost robotic because the producers want it to be perfect, there's really no such thing as perfect. So imagine them doing what they did to the Eagles singer and auto-tune Getty Lee's voice for some, you know, for all the world's a stage. That would be preposterous. No one would, st- would stand for that. That would be absolutely ridiculous that anybody would do that. And I've made videos, uh, I'll put a card up, made a whole video uh, about Giddy Lee's voice, the way it has progressed over the years and how it has matured over the years, and that there were different eras of his voice, that each of those eras were incredible in their own right. And to have someone come in and make decisions to just pitch correct that or outright auto-tune it, it's just unthinkable. And if you think that this could not happen to Rush, well, think about this. So Rush has sold, it has, it's been said, they've, been, they've sold over 40 million records, right? Which is nothing to sneeze at. But then the Eagles, they've sold over 200 million records, purportedly. So what's to stop someone from doing this to Getty Lee's voice when they would do it to Randy Meisner or any of the Eagles uh, singers when they're a much more popular band than Rush was? Well, who would stop them? So I kind of wanted to put this video out kind of like as a call out to anybody who ha- who would have any influence in this. And I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a small YouTuber. Uh, I have a channel dedicated to my favorite band. Not that big. I'd love to be a big channel. Who knows one day, hopefully. And I usually don't say this very often, but, you know, I hint at it. But I would like you to like this video and, you know, subscribe also. But I'd like you to share this video too. Share it to everybody. To let's start putting out the the feelers, if you will, or putting out our putting our foot down and saying, don't ever touch Getty Lee's voice. Never auto tune it. Never pitch correct any of the stuff that's already recorded, because that's what they're doing to uh, the Eagles. And the Eagles are a much more popular band than Rush. So why couldn't it happen to them? So. You know, I want to put that out there. I want to make sure that not, nothing ever gets touched. Now, I'm not against what has been done to their records, like maybe uh, remastering them to make the records sound a little better. But we're talking about like a general sound. We're not talking about pinpointing, uh, pinpointing on Getty Lee's voice and auto tune it, and then it sound like like a robot, like totally unnatural. We definitely don't want any of Rush's music. To be ever touched. Maybe uh, Roll the Bones can be completely remixed. I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm pretty much kidding with that. Even Roll the Bones in its entirety has its personality. And a lot of people, even myself, criticize the sound. But, you know, even that record has its personality. And it's probably best to just leave it as is. But as far as Getty Lee's voice getting auto-tuned, we cannot, we cannot stand for that. There's no way that... Anybody can make the decision to go back on any of Rush's live performances and start messing around with Giddy Lee's voice. That we cannot permit that to happen. So let's, as Rush fans, put our put our foot down. Let's say to anybody who's involved, uh, especially Giddy and Alex, take note that there may be someone thinking about this because if it can be done to the Eagles, it can be done to pretty much anyone. Do not let anyone mess around with any of the recordings, especially the live ones, of our of our band Rush. Uh, no auto-tuning of Giddy Lee's voice. The way the, Giddy Lee's voice is an instrument in and of itself. The way he used it, the way he expended it, the way he, he not wasted it, but he just went all out to the very end where in the R40 tour, you could tell he was, you know, even before that, but you know, he was struggling somewhat to hit those high notes, but dang it, he was going to hit them. And someone could make a case to maybe auto-tune some of the singing in R40. But then that would take away completely the character of what R40 stood for. It's that the musicians, even in their uh, early to mid-60s, could still rock like they did. They could still play their drums, keyboards, guitar, and even singing, all of that. They could still do it at a very high level. And that they determined that this was when we're going to stop. No one's going to play their songs like they played their own songs. It's just never going to happen. There's a lot of cover bands and they do pretty good. I've covered some Rush songs on the drums. But none of us can 
for some reason come close or match you know how, how they sounded so that's that's my spiel that's what i'm saying let's not permit anyone to auto-tune Geddy Lee's voice. That is off the table. Don't do it. And if you agree with me, I'd like you to subscribe to this channel. I'd like you to like this video. And I want you to share this video. Because everybody needs to know that this cannot happen. If you're a fan of Rush, you need to do those three things. You know, if you don't want to subscribe, I don't want to force you. I mean, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. But, but share this video and like this video. Because, you know, I want that YouTube algorithm to get bothered by this video. And if, you know, yeah, they're doing it to the Eagles. Um, but we don't want them to touch Rush. We don't want them to touch Giddy Lee's voice. Do not auto-tune Giddy Lee's voice. That's it for now. Man, I'm tired. I'll see you in the next video. So, yeah, this is where I've got a problem with it. And, and the fact that you're effectively destroying the art form. And you're just destroying the art from back in those times. Hearing as it was on that particular night, on that particular date of that particular year, you're never going to be able to hear that again because you're always going to hear a manipulated version of it that somebody else thinks is better.